Hey, so you've been in Blender and you made a really cool setup, whether it's a group of meshes that you got put together or you made a really cool camera rig and it's got a bunch of constraints in there and you're the smart person that doesn't want to go and duplicate the same thing in every project. You don't need to reinvent the wheel, but maybe it would be good if we could just drag and drop that asset in there. So you probably marked it as asset, thinking those grouped objects would come through through the asset browser, but didn't really work like that. But wouldn't it be great if you could just have it so you can drag and drop an asset in, get it to where you want, maybe have a look through the camera. We can set up some keyframes here. So we could say somewhere about four here. Give it a bit of a rotate. Give another keyframe. And if we come back through, we can see our animation running. Wouldn't that be nice? So instead of talking about, it, let's get straight into it. All right, we're inside Blender and currently I'm using 4.1 to showcase this. And there's a little bit of trickery that's going on that I'm not truly understanding, but follow along with me and I'll try and describe what I think is going on in the background. But this is how we can get grouped objects to connect. And to help me out, I made this nice little car model, just something fun. But really, we're going to be dealing with the hierarchy up here. But the first thing is we want to set up that group asset. So I'm just going to select the tires and the car body, making sure the car body is yellow. So the primary one that you want to parent to. And if you go Control P, parent to, and we go object. And that's going to group it. So we've got the hierarchy up here. And you can see that mesh. And make sure that you're using naming conventions and that. Also, another thing, if I'm talking a little bit too quick, uh, I do have this activated down here, so it's going to show you keys that I'm pressing. But the next part of this, which I feel is the tricky part, is that we're going to use some constraints to pull in our object and make it loadable with the asset browser. And I think this is telling it or tricking it in thinking that they're bones. But anyway, so what I like doing is in this top layer, what we want to do is I just use copy locations. I'm just immediately going to turn that off and I want to duplicate it. So, so if I go shift D while over here, that's going to create two because I've got two objects and I want to combine them too. So I'm going to use this to go front tire and I'm going to use this one to go back tire and just make sure you give them a name so you know what they're doing. And I'm just going to close them down. So really what we've done is we're using the constraints to sort of hold on to the variable. So this was kind of a happy accident for me because I created that camera system that I showed at the start of the video and just threw it into the asset browser and noticed that it actually grouped the objects and brought it across. And when I was trying to do it with other things, it wasn't working until I realized the constraints themselves because with my camera setup, it had a few constraints through it. That's what was holding the object together. So if there is a Blender smart person looking at this video and they sort of understand what's going on here, I feel it's something that's making this think it's bones and it's treating it like an animation rig with the mesh. Uh, please feel free to let me know down below. But the next thing I want to do just before I finish up here is that we're going to mark these as assets. So I want to go right click, mark as asset. But I also want to put this inside of a collection. And we won't just move them inside there. And because we're dealing with a hierarchy, select the hierarchy and drag it inside. And then it's all nice and contained up here. And we're also going to mark the collection as a asset. So we've got car test and that. I've done another one just so there's a few different things. But just with that camera setup as well, I sort of did the same thing for a similar sort of camera setup. So these have constraints all on them, so I can do that similar sort of camera motion. Uh, this is a really nice rig to play with, just having some sort of orbit rig is just going to help out so much. But I think right now what you need to do with a asset library file, uh, if you click and drag out, see how the uh, cursor changes? So it goes from like a little crosshairs. So you drag out from there, you want to click and then select asset browser. And what I've done is it'll probably be in this unsigned category first. So I've got a few in there now, but you want to go on to and make a section so you can go find it. So what I'm going to do is select those new ones that I've made. I'm just going to put it in this category here. And when you're dealing with categories, make sure you save this in your library files. So if you haven't set one of them up yet, you want to come up to edit preferences. You want to come to file paths and you want to create asset library. So I've got a bunch there, but setting one of them up, put this stuff in there and really you want to start using these asset libraries because it just makes populating things so much easier. But now I'm going to jump into a new Blender file and show what we've made. 
All right, we're in a completely fresh Blender file and just going to go straight in there and create that library panel. So click up here, Asset Browser, and go to where you save those assets. I've got a few assets here. But if you're not seeing the objects or you're working between two, because what you can't do is in that original file, just drag from the Asset Browser back into the panel because those constraints are going to be looking for those exact objects and it'll find them in the scene and then just reference them instead of generating new meshes. So what you want to do is have an open scene. And if you don't see a new object, so say if you go back to the original file, do some tweaking and come back, what you can do is refresh asset library and that's going to bring all the assets back. So what I wanted to show first, we'll just select everything and delete. So A and delete. Uh, it's just what happens when you don't have constraints. So if I pull in the without constraints, as you can see, there's no tires on here, no nothing, and you got the car and there's nothing inside the hierarchy. So that's usually what happens when you try and group a group asset. It's not going to hold on to that information. But if I bring in that car with constraints, as you can see, it's brought in those objects and it's kept its constraints. So that's really handy to know because uh, another way that you can bring in objects, so see these ones that have the sort of like filing cabinet, they're the collection ones. So what you can do is I can bring that car test in here and it's going to make it into a reference. But if you come inside here, you can't actually click around. Like if I want to select that tire, I can. This one I can't, but what I can do is if I go control A and then go down to make instance real, I want to open up this little box here and I want to keep hierarchy and kick with parent. So that's going to recreate that file hierarchy with like how the container was. We have the grouped asset and we got everything in there. But as you can probably notice, we're losing those constraints. So this is sort of like a tug of war. Um, the first way without the constraints in, or using the constraints to hold everything together, it's kind of experimental. So sometimes it can be a little bit temperamental when you're trying to create really fantastical grouped objects. However, a more robust way is to create those containers, put everything inside the collection, save that, and then you can realize instance. Like sometimes like this car is super simple. There's no animation there. I'll probably just like transform it. So it could just be a link collection and it doesn't even need to be like that. I can just keep it as that sort of asset that I move around. So, but similar thing like with our camera rig, if I bring this one in, it's going to bring everything in correctly. We've got a hierarchy. So it's got all our constraints so I can move in and punch out. We've got that depth of field selector. So everything sort of come in. But if I try and do that with the camera collection, go control and realize all the instances, none of the stuff is in there. So like this little ring inside that one, that should actually be constrained. So I can't move it away from the axis of the camera. So those sort of things that you got to play with, but really, that's how you make a grouped object in the asset browser. It's been something I'm wanting for a long time and having stumbled on that little happy accident, I think this is a really good justification for this video. So if you did like it and you think it'd be useful, definitely give it that thumbs up because it's going to point this video to anyone that's looking for this. And really, I think this is such an important thing for the asset browser. Just being able to group up assets. So if you've got your favorite camera rig or favorite lighting set up and you have all those little controllers to make it a lot easier to set up your spaces. Like I built that little uh, other scene where it was just your thing. That didn't take too much time at all. And really, if you have any comments or queries or how you would like to use it, please feel free to leave it down below. I do try and go down there and answer as many questions as I can. And building a body of knowledge around this area because I think this is one of those things that is a little bit special that, yeah, I sort of tripped on a rock for them. So in the end, if you did enjoy this one, I've got a bunch of Blender content on this channel forming. So if you're looking for that, I look forward to seeing you next time.